The Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. Read by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org. Chapter 6 the sing song of old man kangaroo not always was the kangaroo as now we do behold him but a different animal with four short legs he was grey and he was woolly and his pride was inordinate he danced on an outcrop in the middle of australia and he went to the little god nqua he went to nqua at six before breakfast saying make me different from all other animals by five this afternoon up jumped Nqua from his seat on the sand-flat, and shouted, Go away! He was grey, and he was woolly, and his pride was inordinate. He danced on a rock-ledge in the middle of Australia, and he went to the middle god, Nquing. He went to Nquing at eight after breakfast, saying, Make me different from all other animals. Make me also wonderfully popular by five this afternoon. Up jumped Nquing from his burrow in the spinifex and shouted, Go away! He was grey, and he was woolly, and his pride was inordinate. He danced on a sandbank in the middle of Australia, and he went to the big god, Nkwong. He went to Nkwong at ten before dinner-time, saying, Make me different from all other animals, make me popular, and wonderfully run after by five this afternoon. Up jumped Nkwong from his bath in the salt-pan, and shouted, Yes, I will! Kwong called Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, dusty in the sunshine, and showed him Kangaroo. And Kwong said, Dingo, wake up, Dingo. Do you see that gentleman dancing on an ash pit? He wants to be popular, and very truly run after. Dingo, make him so. Up jumped Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, and said, What, that cat rabbit? Off ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, grinning like a coal-scuttle, ran after Kangaroo. Off went the proud Kangaroo on his four little legs like a bunny. This, so beloved of mine, ends the first part of the tale. He ran through the desert, he ran through the mountains, he ran through the salt-pans, he ran through the reed-beds, he ran through the blue-gums, he ran through the spinifex. He ran till his front legs ached. He had to. Still ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, always hungry, grinning like a rat-trap, never getting nearer, never getting farther, ran after Kangaroo. He had to. Still ran Kangaroo, Old Man Kangaroo, he ran through the tea-trees, he ran through the mulga, he ran through the long grass, he ran through the short grass, he ran through the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, he ran till his hind legs ached. He had to. Still ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, hungrier and hungrier, grinning like a horse-collar, never getting nearer, never getting farther. And they came to the Walgong River. Now there wasn't any bridge, and there wasn't any ferry-boat, and Kangaroo didn't know how to get over. So he stood on his legs and hopped. He had to. He hopped through the flinders, he hopped through the cinders, he hopped through the deserts in the middle of Australia. He hopped like a kangaroo. First he hopped one yard, then he hopped three yards, then he hopped five yards, his legs growing stronger, his legs growing longer. He hadn't any time for rest or refreshment, and he wanted them very much. So ran Dingo, Yellow Dog Dingo, very much bewildered, very much hungry, and wondering what in the world or out of it made old man Kangaroo hop. For he hopped like a cricket, like a pea in a saucepan, or a new rubber ball on a nursery floor. He had to. He tucked up his front legs, he hopped on his hind legs, he stuck out his tail for a balance weight behind him, and he hopped through the darling downs. He had to. Still ran Dingo, tired dog Dingo, hungrier and hungrier, very much bewildered, wondering when, in the world or out of it, would old man Kangaroo stop. Then came Kwong from his bath in the salt pans, and said, It's five o'clock. Down sat Dingo, poor dog Dingo, always hungry, dusky in the sunshine, hung out his tongue and howled. Down sat Kangaroo, old man Kangaroo, 
stuck out his tail like a milking stool behind him, and said, "'Thank goodness that's finished!' Then said Nkwong, who is always a gentleman, "'Why aren't you grateful to Yellow Dog Dingo? Why don't you thank him for all he has done for you?' Then said Kangaroo, tired old Kangaroo, "'He's chased me out of the homes of my childhood. He's chased me out of my regular meal-times. He's altered my shape, so I'll never get it back, and he's played old scratch with my legs." Then said Nkwong, "'Perhaps I'm mistaken, but didn't you ask me to make you different from all other animals, as well as to make you very truly sought after? And now it is five o'clock.' "'Yes,' said Kangaroo. "'I wish that I hadn't. I thought you would do it by charms and incantations, but this is a practical joke.' joke said nkwong from his bath in the blue gums say that again and i'll whistle up dingo and run your hind legs off no said kangaroo i must apologize legs are legs and you needn't alter em so far as i'm concerned i only meant to explain to your lordliness that i've had nothing to eat since this morning and i'm very empty indeed yes said dingo yellow dog dingo i'm in just the same situation i've made him different from all other animals. But what may I have for my tea?" Then said Nkwong, from his bath in the salt pan, "'Come and ask me about it to-morrow, because I'm going to wash.' So they were left in the middle of Australia, Old Man Kangaroo and Yellow Dog Dingo, and each said, "'That's your fault!' This is the mouth-filling song of a race that was run by a boomer run in a single burst, only event of its kind, started by Big God and Kwong from Warriga Boriga Rumor. Old Man Kangaroo first, Yellow Dog Dingo behind. Kangaroo bounded away, his back legs working like pistons, bounded from morning till dark, twenty-five feet to a bound. Yellow Dog Dingo lay like a yellow cloud in the distance, much too busy to bark. My, but they covered the ground. Nobody knows where they went or followed the track that they flew in. For that continent hadn't been given a name. They ran thirty degrees, from Torres Straits to the Lewin. Look at an atlas, please. And they ran back as they came. Supposing you could trot from Adelaide to the Pacific for an afternoon's run. Half what these gentlemen did. You would feel rather hot, but your legs would develop terrific. Yes, my importunate son, You'd be a marvellous kid. Descriptions of the pictures by the author 1. This is a picture of Old Man Kangaroo when he was the different animal with four short legs. I have drawn him grey and woolly, and you can see that he is very proud because he has a wreath of flowers in his hair. He is dancing on an outcrop, that means a ledge of rock, in the middle of Australia at six o'clock before breakfast. You can see that it's six o'clock, because the sun is just getting up. The thing with the ears and the open mouth is Little God and Qua. And Qua is very much surprised, because he has never seen a kangaroo dance like that before. Little God and Qua is just saying, Go away! But the kangaroo is so busy dancing that he has not heard him yet. The kangaroo hasn't any real name except Boomer. He lost it because he was so proud. Two. This is the picture of Old Man Kangaroo at five in the afternoon, when he had got his beautiful hind legs, just as Big God and Kwong had promised. You can see that it's five o'clock, because Big God and Kwong's pet tame clock says so. That is Kwong in his bath, sticking his feet out. Old Man Kangaroo is being rude to Yellow Dog Dingo. Yellow Dog Dingo has been trying to catch Kangaroo all across Australia. You can see the marks of Kangaroo's big new feet running ever so far back over the bare hills. Yellow Dog Dingo is drawn black, because I'm not allowed to paint these pictures with real colours out of the paint box, and besides, Yellow Dog Dingo got dreadfully black and dusty after running through the flinders and the cinders. I don't know the names of the flowers growing round Kwong's bath. The two little squatty things out in the desert are the other two gods that Old Man Kangaroo spoke to early in the morning. That thing with the letters on is Old Man Kangaroo's pouch. He had to have a pouch, just as he had to have legs. 
End of The Sing Song of Old Man Kangaroo by Rudyard Kipling Read by Tim Bulkley of BigBible.org